Hi everyone, I'm going to be doing this little um, design today. Um, just to quickly show you the um, page. This is from World of Flowers. We've been doing a few of these. I think this one and this one are quite recent. So I should just zoom back in for you. And I've worked out how to get my new camera nice and close, um, which is a very frustrating story, but it, I've done it, so I'm very happy. I'm going to do the background first, like I do with these, um, just so that I can then work out what colours work for the other items. I've decided we've got um, quite a few. I've moved the book this time to show you. So I've got a couple of yellows and sort of brownish pink and purple. So I'm going to do something a little bit different for this one. I don't want it to make it look too rainbow-like. I think I'm going to do a, um, a sepia. I'm using Castle Arts um, pencils. I don't know if I can get that in focus. Yes, I can. Oh, I'm learning. Um, this is the sepia colour. Um, this is the 72 set that I'm using today. So uh, I've got quite a good range of colours. Um, I have also got the been gifted these actually which is very very kind but I've also been gifted the botanical set and the seascape set which is fantastic so they are a lot of fun and sometimes I just want a little set I just realized I haven't got a piece of paper underneath my page which is something I normally do just to protect the picture behind I don't actually have any coloring behind here at the minute I haven't done a lot in this book so I'm gonna carry on but normally I would have a piece of paper underneath. It's making me worry. I'm just going to grab one. I just got one off, off camera. Um, it's just a plain piece of paper, as you can see. And I just pop it underneath the page. Sorry. I'm going to my cable a bit more. There I just put it under the page. much rustling I'm really sorry and it just protects it underneath I always do this I would always recommend doing this whichever book oh we knocked him a little wonky there we go whichever book you are using just to protect the page what it means is that any print even if it's not been coloured in might transfer to the opposite page when you put pressure on this side so even if you press really lightly, just pop a piece of paper behind. Now, finding a piece that's the right size for these books, um, for Johanna Basford books, is a little bit tricky because they're quite big. But um, what I got is something actually, it's no good telling you really, but I will because I won't fi not finish my story. But um, when Woolworths was closing down in the UK, um, there were rolls of drawing paper for kids and my husband bought loads because our boys were little absolutely like bonkers loads like 50 rolls or something and they were like meters and meters long and yeah the children use them a bit but we have got loads left and so he very kindly uses his guillotine to put them into pieces of the right size to go in this book which is fantastic um why does he do it? Because I can't be trusted with anything sharp of any description. So uh, he does it for me. He owns the guillotine. He uses it. Okay, so that's my background done. Now I'm going to think about the pots. And if you look at the pots in the picture above, you can see I try to um, do them so that they were colour coordinated. So we've got the sort of browny yellows and greens with a little bit of green and blues. So what I'm going to do with these, I'm thinking as this is a cupboard and this is a shelf, if this was my cupboard, I would have a different set of coloured pots here. I'm going to do these orange and red. Um, so they so it looks like I've sort of colour stacked all my pots because I think that's probably what I would do because I'm a bit of a control freak so uh, I like things to be organized I'm going to use my red ochre let's get it around the right way for you there we go red ochre first and uh, start with our first mini pot down here now for the what I'm going to do is just do a light layer first and then think about where the shadow is going to go I'm going to sharpen this Excuse my creaky chair. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> Need to get some oil on there. I don't know if you can hear that. Just giving it a sharpen. 
Now Johanna's drawn us some lines along here which is a nice clue so I shall do a little bit darker here but I should also do a bit dark on this side and what that can do for us is to make it look like the light's catching the front of the pot which is how I've done the ones above so it's going to sort of be consistent and look right because the light would be coming from the same place on each shelf and also it helps to give the pot a little bit of shape. We can't do much with it because of it being so small, but we can help a little bit. So this is the burnt ochre, which in this set is quite orangey. Sorry, I don't know if I can. the camera will focus if I go too close eventually or not. Let me, I'm just going to experiment. Does it eventually come into focus? Maybe. I don't know. But um, anyway, I'll try to um, hold them down on the paper level. I'm not going to do that little ridge or pattern in a different colour. So this time I'm doing this one a little bit differently. So I'm putting down lots of layers on the edge. And then I'm going to reduce them as I go towards the middle. Rather than doing a light layer all over first. Either way will work. It really doesn't matter. It's up to you what works for you. So yes, I've had a very frustrating morning. I went to the hygienist to have my teeth sorted. There's nothing wrong with that. Fantastic. My teeth feel really lovely and clean, shiny. So that was good. And she was pleased with me. I'd been doing a good job. Unfortunately, she's leaving and she's lovely. So that was a sad thing, but never mind. Um, so hopefully they found a lovely person to replace her with. Um, so, but I came back and I thought I'd have a fiddle with my camera and try and get it zooming in a bit more closely because I was struggling with that in my last couple of videos. This is the Orange Lake. And I'm going to do this pot here. And uh, so I was fiddling and faddling this morning and messing around a bit on Instagram as well, as you do. And watching a video where someone was using it really successfully and I had no idea what he was doing because he's talking like some sort of expert photography person and I don't even know what the word exposure means so, uh, so anyway <laughs> so I got frustrated I, okay I'll go to customer services to talk to them this is cadmium orange so I phoned them up and spoke to them no I didn't I'm lying I didn't phone them up I used one of those online chat things I spoke to a bot first who was useless which isn't really surprising because my need is a bit odd. So I then um, flesh light. I then um, just spoke to a person, and this poor man, he's patience of a saint. I was going, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this do? What does? And he kept explaining and helping me. But I said, I can't zoom in closely enough. He said, Well, I'm afraid you just can't zoom in any closer. And I was like. But I've seen people do it. I've seen videos where people have zoomed it. No, I'm sorry, you can't do it. That's that. Oh. So he kept answering various questions anyway. Last one here is the Venetian red. And um, so I said, oh, OK, I'll just fiddle with it on my own. So I was, oh, so I was frustrated. Oh, and I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then my children had come onto Discord and left me a message because they're at college today. So I, uh, I had to check that out quickly. I was like, oh, my children are okay, they were fine. They're bored. My mum and bored. I was like, oh, go, go and find something to do. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to do this jug in a Delft blue. I don't know why. I just think it'll look nice. Anyway. Um, so uh, I thought, oh, I'm just, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to raise the tripod up a bit. And because uh, it was very close, because I was trying to zoom in really close. And I thought, I'll just raise the tripod up a bit and I'll zoom it to the maximum zoom that I can with the tripod at a decent height. Because I had it so close, I couldn't really um, you could get my hand underneath the camera. So I did that. And uh, I was sort of thinking, well, I've looked at some pictures by... Emily Illustrator and Susan Wimpany Berry and they they're probably about as close as I was getting with this camera so I thought oh I thought it's acceptable or I might be able to find some editing software where I could sort of trim the film after and that would be flipping complicated I hate editing anyway so I thought oh I'll just rise it up and off we go raised it up press the zoom and I got this zoomed in perfection goodness knows why my husband, I ran upstairs, he's, um, he's working from home today. He's working from home all month. Oof. 
anyway that wasn't a sign hopefully he doesn't watch this video uh, <laughs> i'm gonna do these silver spoons well i'm gonna do them silver um anyway and i said ah oh, i said it worked because of this and he's a photographer i'm not he said oh when you have it too close it it puts on some sort of setting and it probably took it off when you moved it away i was like oh good thanks love cool gray i'm going to talk you through the spoons a bit more so i now finish my exciting story what i'm going to do is do a harder layer around the outside you could use several shades of gray but because it's only a little spoon I'm not going to and then lighter in the middle now that makes it look sort of shiny the thing is it might make it look like it's depends which way you want the spoon to be facing because if the dippy bit of the spoon for want of a better technical term cup I don't know the cupped bit is facing you it would actually be darker in there because there will be shadow but for some reason that looks like the cup bits there it seems to be working but of course the spoons could be either way round. There's no indication on them which way they're facing. So I just do it like that to try and make them look a bit shiny. And uh, I'm quite happy. I've got some spoons to colour in ivy on the Wonder Room page, which I've been wondering how to colour. And I think that seems to work quite well. That one at the back looks like it's upside down with the cupped bit facing that way. This one just looks a bit odd. Is that better? Now that one looks like it's going the other way. Maybe it's an illusion, who knows. Anyway, I'm happy with those. They look shiny-ish. That's what I wanted. Now they're obviously sitting in this big cup. Um, I'm thinking, should I do it green? But we've got green things up here. But it wouldn't fit with those because it's a different thing. So I think I will do it green. Because I'm thinking, if that was a green plant pot, I'd have put it in that pile. Wouldn't you? Would you? No, maybe I'm just too uh, being too fussy. So the fallow green light we're going to do oh, needs a sharpen. There we go. Now I've got a lot of pictures on this page still left to do. So uh, I am my plan is to persevere through the page. I might not publish them all one after the other because I think it gets a little bit boring. So that's why I have been jumping around from page to page a little bit. I did that with my Worlds of Wonder videos because I found that if I put a series up, so things from one page, people seem to get bored and stop looking and watching and my views went right down. Whereas if I sort of intermingle them with other pictures, people seem to view them more. I don't know what that is all about, but uh, they will all be here eventually. That's my plan anyway. See, I coloured that in the same way as the pots and jugs. So this is all quite simple stuff. It's all the same. And you can pick your colours, of course. Now these plates and saucers, I would say, I'm going to go for all these in the same colour family. Um, I'm thinking pinks. Let's go pinks. Pinks are pretty. Let's just go pink. So I'm going to go with my lightest pink first, as that's what is closest to me so a rose pink for the bottom saucer now what I'm going to be wary of is as I'm going to be taking the pinks from my box from my tin I should say in order I don't want to color these in order because I think although if I was stacking this cupboard I'd be quite fussy look how uneven they are I don't my next pink in my box is the next sort of shade up which is the grenadine light i don't want to do that one that color and then that one's slightly dark and that one's slightly it's going to look like very unnatural so i'm going to do this light one about halfway up here and we're going to do an organized randomness which is a strange phrase i've just made up but what i mean is we want to make it look random by manipulating the order so here is our cherry pink and what we'll do, it doesn't need sharpening, is we'll do the top one in this. Well, that's quite a different colour anyway, look at that, it's very vibrant. Oh, I like that. I think it would be a little bit odd if all your plant pots were these colours and then your saucers were all pink. I'm sure that wouldn't happen, but never mind. Japer pink? 
next. This one hasn't been sharpened since I had it, so I'm going to just, I don't like the square end. There we go, nice point. And I'm going to go down to the bottom with this one. Oh, nearly started singing then. I forgot I was recording. You don't want to hear me singing. No, no, no. This is a purple light. It's a pinky, pinky shade, so it will work. Like having a bit of a sharpen. Um, I think we'll go in here with this one. Oh, I like this colour. Look at that. Very pretty. You see we're using the same technique over and over again. So hopefully it's not getting too boring. Oh, we've gone on to purple. I'm going to use the purple um, for this one. I think it's still a very pinky colour. I wouldn't call this purple myself. I would call it... Well, it's, in some pencils that would be magenta. In... Um, in... What are you flipping called? Arteza. <laughs> Sorry, language. In the Arteza set, that's a magenta. And I think in the polys, that looked quite like a fuchsia. Now, our last one is the... Oh, that's very pink. The aubergine. I don't think I'm going to use that. Um, I know. I'm going to grab this red. Oops. The cadmium red, to me... Oops looks a pinky red I'm going to be very gentle with it keep it light and hopefully it will look pink see what if you've got a limited amount of pinks you could mix them with purples and things to get different shades there we go yeah I think we'll leave that one there we've used a lot of colors haven't we I've got to write them all down in the description Ooh. anyway there we go there's that one done I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, thank you very much for watching and happy colouring.